Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Journey to the Magic, the official podcast from Walt Disney Travel Company, direct from Disney HQ in London. Now, over the last three seasons, I've loved chatting to some brilliant celebrities about their love of all things Disney, but I feel like something's been missing. We all know what makes Disney so special are the millions of fans around the world who love getting lost in the magic of Walt Disney World, Disneyland Paris and Disney Cruise Line holidays. So, to celebrate 100 years of Disney, I thought I'd invite along some of our lovely listeners to hear why Disney is so magical for them in this very special episode. We have some fantastic guests lined up, including the recently crowned UK's biggest Disney fan and a very special Lightning McQueen quickfire round with both of our Disney insiders, Jay Amy and Elkie. But now, on to our fabulous fans. First up, we are going to chat to one of our younger listeners. Please welcome Martha Holt, who is 18 and a particular fan of Walt Disney World. Hello, Martha. Hi. How are you liking Disney HQ? I'm loving it. It's so cool. It's better than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be good, so loving it. I'm loving your enthusiasm already, and we haven't even started talking about the parks. Let's just get me started. So when did you first visit Walt Disney World? So I was 18 months old. Yeah, my parents took me, just me, Yeah, 18 months old, and we've been going back ever since. How Uh, often do you go? Every two years. So I've done eight trips and our next trip is in eight weeks i mean what a nice way to warm up to your next trip no i'm so excited we're counting down the days but your last trip must have been the most magical yet tell me about the last trip so we went at christmas Mm. our first christmas trip it was everything i could have hoped for and more very magical and we got to see the christmas parade which (laughs) was just the best trip ever and we celebrated new year's there as well so and big. what was it like in comparison to your other trips? What was it like being there over the Christmas period? It was the best, honestly. We had such a great time. Obviously, we spent Christmas Day there, which was the best Christmas day. Um, <laughs> it was, it's hard to describe it. And it went so quickly. We were there for three weeks. Wow. But I love Everest. It's yeah. my absolute favourite ride, full stop. Um, and on Christmas Day, me and my dad and my sister went on it about eight o'clock in the morning crazy um but we had the whole train to ourselves no yeah so there was other people in the queue but they just let us have the whole train to ourselves so we rode it just the three of us um which is incredible uh, now a little bird told me that your friends don't really get your disney holidays yeah. like your your obsession your love uh, which is what led you to the podcast yeah. and i love that so what does walt disney world mean to you it means everything i think unless you know you don't know yeah. and people just don't get it if you haven't been and done it properly then you don't understand the magic and it's more than the rides it's everything and once you're there you're in that Disney bubble for like two weeks you haven't got to worry about anything apart from what you're going to eat yeah and what you're going to ride yeah so yeah it's everything do you think there's something about having a holiday where you and the family can do things together like have yeah. a shared experience yeah we talk about it all the time we'll be sat at dinner and we'll just bring it up bring up Disney what we're doing on our next trip we've got it all planned out we know what we're doing. We're definitely planners. I mean, you are eight weeks out. What are you most looking forward to doing? I'm riding Guardians. Ah, oh, so excited. You've not done it yet. No, <gasps> Martha, I'm excited for you. So excited. It is the best thing I have ever experienced. I think it's. They don't have anything like it. Nope. So I'm very much looking forward to that and Tron. Yes. Just opened up. I haven't done that. You have to so tell me what that's like. Very excited for that as well. Riding all the new rides. Well, enjoy your trip. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about it online. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. (laughs) Now, sticking with Walt Disney World, I want to invite on Kath and Bob Watson, who know so much about the resort that they act as admin on an Orlando fan site. Hello. Hello. Um, Now, you started by going to Disneyland Paris. And when your kids were four and five, you decided to take the plunge and take the family to Walt Disney World. And when you were there you met a very special person. Tell me more. It was 2001 when we first went, and we went end of November, early December. So we were there for Walt's 100th birthday. And we're walking along, and we're going, oh, look at that lovely sorcerer's hat that they've got for the 100-year celebration. And as we're walking up towards it, there's this whole group of men in suits. And suddenly, from amongst those suits, we went, that's Roy Disney. And we went, real (laughs) <laughs> Roy Disney. Um, and as they came past, we were just went, 
hello. <laughs> and they acknowledged the high back. And since then, Disney has meant so much to us. I wish we had known then and been able to go, thank you, because the company is, and what they've done has meant so much to us and our family ever since. I mean, I just can't believe that on your first trip to Walt Disney World, you met Disney royalty. Yeah. That, that is super special. Um, and as you said, it means so much to you and your family. And actually before that trip, Charlie, your son, uh, had been diagnosed with autism and learning difficulties. So what was that first trip to Walt Disney World like for him? It was absolutely magical. Really? Yes. It could not have been a better place for him. These huge characters and the brightness and the colours. Mm -hmm. We stayed on site the whole time. We did me character meals. He absolutely adored all of it. Um, we thought perhaps the noises would be too much, yeah. sensory overload mm -hmm. and bright colours and sounds and things. He took it all in his stride absolutely brilliantly. He loved Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Pot Ride in Magic <laughs> Kingdom. How many times did you get oh, I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> we still have to do it now. <laughs> do you? <laughs> Multiple times, every visit, yes. <laughs> it's a small world mm -hmm. and he just loved meeting the characters that he'd watched on the television and they they were real to him and it's just sparked his imagination from there he was still wearing nappies at age four within that two weeks he was absolutely dry no absolutely and each time we've gone we've seen an improvement in his development that's that is unexplainable yeah and that's the bad magic of disney for us it was where he took his first words as well really yeah up until then he'd made noises but we realized he wasn't making words like he should be at that age and we'd actually been through a round of um was it a hearing issue rather than developmental and we were in the park meeting characters and suddenly he comes out with hello pinocchio clear as a bell <gasps> um clearly he just hadn't had anything he'd wanted to say up until that point <laughs> until he met pinocchio and then he had to say hello to pinocchio i mean talk about difficult first words <laughs> that's two words and it's the word pinocchio in it mm. Yes. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot for your mouth to handle. Yeah. It's, it, that is his world. Yeah. Um, he, he loves the, the characters. He loves the music. He loves the art. He loves the stories. And it's his way to communicate his world. And it's, it's a lovely way for us to join his world yeah. as well. And that we can communicate with him. It must just make you want to keep going back. Uh, we do keep going back. <laughs> 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 I absolutely love that. Um, and to aid his communication skills, Charlie found a whole new way to communicate at the animation station in Hollywood Studios. Tell me about this. Okay, so um, he, back in 2011, I think it was, he developed his um, art skills. I don't know where he's got them from because he certainly hasn't got them from us. But he, part of his autism is an obsession with drawing and getting things right and, and computer work. Right. And he was drawing relentlessly. So we went into the animation station in Hollywood Studios and they put up on the screen the character that you're going to draw. Yeah. So we all sat with our pencils ready to draw the character on screen and we're all following along doing it. But Charlie's head was down. And he was scribbling away even before it had started. <gasps> and as soon as the uh, session was over, um, the artist came up to find out why this young man really wasn't following, you know, almost why, why is he here if he's not doing the character on screen? Yeah. And before he could say anything, he looked down at his artwork and he'd drawn the Tomb Patrol from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <gasps> and the artist went... Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. He said, I drew this for my audition to become a Disney artist. And he said, the potential in his art is phenomenal. So he said, I'm going to go and get some of my artwork and swap it <gasps> for Charlie. So he has Charlie's Tomb Patrol and we have a few of his on our wall as well. And he said, you've got some of Charlie's art with you today. He enjoys doing mashups of different characters together in different situations. So we've got Mushu here. He's as Ben Alligator from Fantasia. It's so clever to take... Not, it's not just one character, it's two characters that he's, he's, he's putting together and that's, that's such a clever thing to do. We've got Tarzan as Chip and he loves some of the obscure characters as well because this one, not everyone's going to recognise that that's the waitress from Emperor's New Groove from, mm -hmm. from The Mug of Meat. 
and he's he's turned her into Mrs. Potts. <laughs> Love it. Um, what would you say is your most memorable memory of a Disney park? We find that the memories that you that really stay with you tend to be ones you haven't planned, yeah. things that just happen to you as you go along. It, it's like you've got all the ingredients there and then Disney is this little bit of pixie dust catalyst that makes these wonderful memories happen. And I'm going to say about our daughter, who's now 27 and a mechanical engineer <laughs> and would love to be an Imagineer. She, she, she is so geeky. We go on something and she says, oh, I know how they did that. Oh, I don't know how they did that. I want to know. <laughs> but she, the first, uh, one of the first times we took her to Disneyland Paris and she just got a little toddling legs mm. and it was a hot day and we were hiding in the arcade for a bit of shade. Yeah. And we were there with extended family sitting on the benches. And then from out of nowhere appeared Mickey mm -hmm. and he took her hand <laughs> and they were toddling together. It looked like one of the adverts that you see Aww. on TV and he toddled at her pace and they were there for quite a while, like the only two in the world. And we all sat on the benches and cried <laughs> <laughs> and said, did anyone have a camera then? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no camera. Oh. And that and it, but it's ingrained. Yeah. It's one of those memories that's ingrained. And she has a huge love of Disney as well. So I love the impact it's had on your whole family. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's lovely to talk to you. Lovely to talk to you. Now, what I have loved about hosting this podcast is hearing so much about Disney Cruise Line. I cannot believe how much I was missing out on. And here to share some of their magical memories is Jodie Anderson. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good, good. Now, Disney Cruise Line has played a massive part in yours and your family's lives. Tell me about that. Yes, yeah, so basically in 2018, my husband was offered the opportunity to go and work in New Jersey. Um, and the kids were nine, seven and three at the time. So I was looking into flights and all of a sudden I discovered Disney Cruise Line because I didn't really know it had existed. And the dates lined up and it went from Portsmouth to New York. So you just couldn't make it up. It was yeah. the perfect dates going exactly where we wanted to go. Um, and I decided, you know, we hadn't ever done a cruise before, but because it was a Disney cruise, you know, I knew that the kids would love it. Yeah. Um, and my husband couldn't come because he didn't have enough annual leave left. So I took one for the team. So just and, you and the three kids? Yeah, just me and the kids. Uh, stepped on board. And, I mean, when I say it was the most amazing holiday ever, from the second we stepped on board and they announced us, uh, the kids were just, like, in awe of the ship and... We didn't really know what to expect, which I think was really nice because yeah. everything was like a new adventure and a new discovery. And when we stepped off the ship, we all looked at each other and they said, Mum, if we could, I would get back on the ship and do another 11 days. And I was like, that was when I realised, OK, we've got four cruise addicts now. <laughs> so. Well, and also to be anywhere for 11 days and to get off of it and go instantly... I'd oh yeah, we could have. Yeah, yeah, we could have easily have turned around. They they loved Kids Club. It was just action packed and all the Disney characters. Yeah, and just getting room service and watching a Disney movie in our cabin was fun. Like every day, there was so much to do, and we just absolutely loved it. So what What was the best part of it for you? Most magical moment was definitely the pirate night. Hmm. Um, there we were in the middle of the ocean, and the fireworks went off, and we were just on board with hundreds of other people who loved Disney. Yeah. Uh, that was a real sort of magic moment. And the kids just thought that was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, and I think the fact that we were moving countries at the same time, it just made everything so much more special. And it was just such a memorable trip. But yeah, my husband, unfortunately, bore the brunt of it was the best holiday ever, Dad. <laughs> and it was absolutely brilliant, Dad. And yeah, he, he, he was like, OK, when are we going on a Disney cruise? Well, yeah, so since then, how many Disney cruise ships have you been on? Where have you explored? Yep, so we've been on um, two more ships, yep. uh, but we've done four cruises. Okay. So one of the first trips we booked from New Jersey was the Alaska cruise. Right. Which was on the Wonder. Um, so we flew to Vancouver and, yeah, I mean, that was a totally different experience, just cruising through snow-capped mountains mm. for seven days um, and experiencing the new restaurants on board. Like, it was, you know, it was 
it was really nice that it was a different ship because we just got to explore a whole new ship and they got to do that with dad. So Is there a feeling of like familiarity about it but also that newness when you step on a step on a ship? Oh yes, definitely because you get there all the cast members are, you know super friendly and you know you know the rough layout of the ship and what to do but just going uh, one of our favorite nights was um at Tiana's place. Right. Um in that restaurant and you know we didn't know what to expect. So when they all came in singing the songs and every, we all got our necklaces, um, yeah, it was really nice to experience the, the different restaurants on board that ship. And when your husband joined you, did he instantly get why it had been such a magical trip? Yes, he did, yeah. I think, obviously, his expectations were pretty high, yeah. you know, because everyone had been raving about it. But just, again, we were really lucky with the weather. Um, we had some amazing excursions, Um I had a really nice room. We we had a veranda room that time. Yeah. You know, there was something for everybody at all ages, you know. What's been your favourite destination so far? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, yeah, it would probably have to be Alaska. Um, oh, but also Castaway Key. Because, ah. yeah, another cruise, we did a maritime cruise from Miami. Right. Because um, we really wanted to go to Castaway Key. And my eldest son and I did the 5K. Yes, uh, and you got yeah. the medal. Yeah, we got yes. the medal. And he was really proud of himself because that's the furthest he'd ever run. Uh -huh. um, and I... Um, I do a lot of the Run Disney events. Do you? Yeah. So. I mean, this is a whole other podcast, Jodie. Oh, I, I know. I've got, I've got a medal with me. Have yeah. you? Yeah. I, that was, uh, the stars aligned. I stepped onto the cruise and uh, there was a family all wearing Run Disney t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. And that's the first time I'd heard of Run Disney. Um, since then, I've done five race weekends. <laughs> I'm hooked. What distances? So 5K, 10K, half marathon, and I did the marathon once. Um, and you are now emigrating to Australia. Yes, we are. History is repeating itself. You're yes. going somewhere new. Yes, it is. Um, so my husband's Australian. And we visited them, um, went to Australia for Easter. And it wasn't even on the cards, but we just decided, do you know what? We're going to move. Um, and we were looking at dates. And my twin sister was like, oh, can you stay till Christmas? Because, you know, it's got happening really quickly. Yeah. Um, but then I discovered the uh, Honolulu to Sydney cruise. And I told the kids and they were like, oh, mom, mom, tell Auntie Carrie we've... We've got to get the cruise there again. <laughs> that's how that's how we do it, Mum. You know, we've got to get the, the cruise. So, yeah, so we've booked the cruise and we're going in October. It's literally yeah. history repeating itself. Yes. The Disney cruise is about to yes. take you to your new life. Yes. Yeah, I, I joke that our, our once-in-a-lifetime experience of moving countries with Disney Cruise Line has now turned into a twice-in-a-lifetime experience. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but like, very I mean, exciting. Yeah, everyone's got to watch out where they're popping up because who knows where you might move to next. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what makes the Disney Cruise Line um, holiday so magical for you? Oh, so, so many reasons. I think for me personally, you know, I've been a stay-at-home mum for 13 years and, you know, life can get a bit repetitive sometimes, yeah. but I step on board that ship I get my ears on, I get my Mickey gear on and I don't have to worry about anything and I can just be a kid again. Yeah. Um, and for the kids, you know, it's just such a magical place to be. You know, we can be in our cabin and I can say to them, OK, in five minutes, do you want to watch a Broadway show at the theatre? Do you want to go and see Mickey? Uh, do you want to do an animation class? Do you want to watch a Disney movie from the pool? <laughs> I mean... It's so easy as a family of five cruising and just with so many options, um, you know, within the ship. Yeah. It's so easy to get everywhere and there's just so much to do. Um, and then I suppose the, the other thing is that, you know, a lot of people cruise Disney because they love Disney. Yeah. So you instantly have something in common with everybody on board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so many times I've sat in the hot tub with somebody from Texas or somebody from Minnesota and you instantly have that commonality and yeah. we all share our Disney stories and all our, you know, special memories and tips and tricks. And it's just, yeah, it just makes the ship happy because Disney people are always happy people. Mm -hmm. And when you put them all on a ship, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you, Jodie. <laughs> uh, and good luck with your move down under. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Now, continuing with our Disney Cruise Line adventure is Joa, who has just reached, let me get this right, Pearl Castaway Club status. Yes. This is huge. <laughs> now, I'm going to start by saying that you are admin on a Disney Cruise Line fan site, so you know a thing or two when it comes to Disney cruising. Yes. 
yeah. <laughs> a few things. A few things. What's the number one question you get asked? Probably, what stateroom should I book? Um, and there is no one answer to that because really? everyone wants different things. They want to be near the pool deck. They want to be near the cinema. They want to be near the food. Who doesn't want to be near the food? <laughs> um, so that one question normally elicits more questions from our experienced members asking, well, what's your family makeup? What do you like? But what we find is that those new members very quickly start answering those same questions for the very new members. So it becomes a little community. It's very nice. That's lovely, passing on the knowledge. Yes, definitely, yeah. Have you stayed in lots of different rooms over the years? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every level, I think. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Well, I mean, for the 25th anniversary, Disney Cruise Line have created a top tier of their Castaway Club and you have reached Pearl Castaway Club status. Yes. Tell me more. What is this? Um, I've done 30 cruises mm -hmm. with Disney. 30? Um, yeah. It's lovely to be a Pearl member. Yeah. Um, we get to book a little bit earlier than other people. And we did have... Um, a sneak a kind of booking for when The Wish came out. Right. So anyone over 25 cruises was allowed to book a little bit earlier, uh, which was wonderful. Um, and that has now carried on for the Pearl members. So Have you been on The Wish yet? Yes. How did you find it? I loved The Wish. I loved it. I loved the fact that it was so different mm -hmm. to the other ships. Right. Um, it is very, very different in lots of different ways. But absolutely amazing in all of those ways as well it's it was just lovely we had a very nice time have you been on all of the ships yes which one is your favorite the magic oh, definitely why? the magic why the magic is a classic ship yeah um it was the ship that i got married on oh um and i absolutely love the crew i love everything about the magic She's, so, so the crew stayed the, the same? Um, well, they travel around. Right. But obviously a lot of them stay on the magic. They yeah. like the magic. They like the destinations that it goes to. Um, so that's always quite nice that yeah. um, we meet the same crew over and over again. They're like our family. What, are, what have been your favourite destinations? Favourite cruise was probably the 2014 Transatlantic. It was 14 nights. It was from Barcelona through the Canaries, down to the Caribbean, wow. and then ended in San Juan. And we got married on that one. <gasps> we had 56 of our friends and family with us. It was huge. It was, it was pretty epic. And by that point, I'm guessing that cruising and being and, and loving Disney Cruise Line had already been very cemented in your life. So to yes. have so many of your friends and family there Definitely. with you, yeah. sharing that experience. Absolutely, yeah. They And they were all Disney fans from Disney fan sites. Right. Um, and they some of them had never cruised before. Yeah. Um, they were used to going to the parks. But once they experienced cruises... Stuck with cruises. You must get that a lot because I know that we, that's something that we've experienced on the podcast. You know, so many people know the parks, so they don't, don't necessarily know much about the yeah, cruise line. Absolutely. I'm for one, I'm definitely guilty of that until we went on the Wish last year and yeah. I totally fell in love with it. I'm going in a few weeks on on the Dream and I cannot wait. Yeah. Um, but you, it must surprise people when they actually go and experience that and go, oh, this is Disney, but in a very different way way yeah. it's a a much more laid back it's a, it's an yeah. in, it's enjoyable in a different way yeah definitely there's there's not as much planning involved yeah it can be as busy as you want yeah. or it can be as quiet as you want it can be as disney as you want or mm -hmm. it can be as not disney as you want so very much people that came to our wedding were like i don't you know i don't like disney but they came along they loved it because <laughs> the service is amazing yep. the crew are amazing the the whole ship it's just lovely if everything is so nice we've met friends on the cruises from all over the world and we cruise with some of them every single year really and yeah so that's disney it's family you know and everything everything that we do on the cruises um is always something to remember yeah. it's it makes magical memories really magical memories it's lovely um tell us about the upcoming cruise ships that you've booked on and why have you chosen those itineraries on that ship oh so in october we are flying to australia to ha go on the disney wonder the first cruise out of sydney so if mr mouse is listening we need a big sail away party <laughs> lots of fireworks please yeah um 
yeah, can't wait. And that's, yeah, October. So I just literally can't wait for that time. But I don't want to wish time away. So I know. How far in advance do you book your book your trips? The day they come out. Really? Yeah, that's always the best best time to book them is as soon as they come out. Um, and then it, it's all flexible anyway. So, you know, you can change and, if, you know, you want to cancel, then it's all good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I book on the first day. What do you think is the common misconception when it comes to cruising in general? That you're stuck on a ship. That's what everyone says to me. I don't want to be stuck on a ship. Well, nor do I. I don't want to be stuck on a ship either. But that's why I cruise, because I go to different places. I get to experience a day in Rome. And then I get back on my lovely floating hotel. I have the most amazing food, which is all included in my price. Mm -hmm. I get my entertainment, which is all included in my price. Oh, unlimited ice cream, included (laughs) in my price. Um, And the shows are tremendous they're west end quality shows um and then the next morning i wake up and i'm in naples and i can go and have some traditional pizza Mm -hmm. and and it goes on and on and then i might get a day at sea where i can just relax i absolutely love that i absolutely Mm -hmm. love it what does a disney cruise mean to you oh i think it means uh coming home and family definitely family um the people that we meet um, on board, we they are our extended family now and their life events are our life events. We share sadness and joy with them across the Atlantic yeah. and we pick up where we left off when we cruise with them every year. Um, but it also means memories for my family as well and my friends. Mm. You know, it's just lovely that crew are amazing they make everyone feel like a vip it doesn't matter if it's your first cruise or your 30th cruise they just make you feel special and that's the disney difference thank you so much joa i think i might have to go on a few more cruises before i join you at pearl castaway club status (laughs) but here's hoping But it's not just Disney Cruise Line and Walt Disney World that we celebrate on this podcast. No, no, no. We also spread the joy for Disneyland Paris. And to share her memories is a woman after my own heart. It's Amanda Tickle. Hello. Hi. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Good, good, good. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, I said you're a woman after my own heart. You are the key organiser when it comes to your multi-generational family trips to Disney. I am. So in my household, there are six of us aged between 12 and 70. Um, We all live together and we all holiday to Disney together. Um, We've been doing that since 2001. So as the girls have been toddlers, we've been planning and organising right through the decades up until only two weeks ago, actually, we were in Disneyland Paris. So I don't think as a family we ever stop planning. So between trips, we're always looking and researching and picking up things that we want to do the next time because there's always something new to do. And you're a Disneyland Paris annual pass holder. Yes. So what does that mean and how many times do you think you've been to that particular park? Gosh, okay. So we've been pass holders now probably for about 15 years. Wow. Um, Yeah, a long time. We've done around almost 30 trips in total, but I couldn't tell you how many actual days we've been in the park. Um, And we were there just the weekend before last. If you're going more than once in the year, I'd absolutely recommend getting an annual pass. Um, Now, you are the queen of Disney tips within your friendship group. They all turn to you. Uh, What would you say is your best one, bearing in mind our listeners know a fair amount too? So it can't be one that you picked up in the podcast. No, no. So I'm, I'm... I'm going to share this and I may regress it. I know. You're the, the look on your face is like, I really don't want to feel like you. you. So I'm going I'm to tell you about our favourite viewing spot for the parade that not many people go to or okay. tend to go to. So most people tend to flood Main Street or the, the kind of more common parts of the parade pathway. However, we've picked up that if you go where the gates are that the parade first comes out of. So there's a restaurant called Bellinotte. Yeah. And directly opposite there, that, that's the gates where the parade comes out. Now there's a fence at the back, so you don't get the crowds behind you. But if you're very quick and you get the space by the gates, it's absolutely brilliant because you get the immediate character interaction of the parade. You know, there's so much energy. They come out, they're really <laughs> waving at you. And also when it's past, you don't kind of get bundled with the crowd. Yeah. So my tip 
for when you know you're there wanting to see the parades go and stand by those gates because you'll get the best experience of those parades very good i mean i can see that <laughs> you really didn't want to give that away i know <laughs> really didn't. Um, now, you must have some pretty amazing stories of your time at Disneyland Paris. Share a few. What are your favourite memories of time okay. there as a family? And so, also what's interesting is you've been there as your children have grown up, so you've seen it in loads of different uh, ways. Like every every sort of part of their childhood, like they've been going since they were toddlers, I think my young, my eldest was just almost two when we first took her, and um, she's 22 now, so <laughs> she has literally grown up, but... Um, I actually had my own Cinderella experience once at Disneyland Paris. Did you? Yeah. So there's a restaurant called Toad Hall and it's it only just recently opened, so it wasn't that long ago. And um, I am renowned, as you may see, for wearing ballet pumps. And I have a special pair that I wear for Disney with a certain brand that also do trainers. And <laughs> <laughs> the girls always laugh at me because they're like, that's not appropriate. <laughs> so anyway, I'd seen this Toad Hall, so it was open. And I, I sped up to go up the steps, but I missed the bottom step. And there was a French man who kind of went to catch me, but I managed to recover. However, in my recovery, I lost my shoe. Right. And it landed on the step. So then I fell into his arms again, <laughs> and he, he rescued me <laughs> with my shoe on the step. So, you know, it, it, was, it was a moment. So I said, it's, it's kind of like a Cinderella in reverse. I love so, that. Yeah, that, that was a memorable one. Yeah. <laughs> There was another time I was sat watching uh, the castle show and I, again, we were quite near the front and I got so overwhelmed with emotion um, and I started crying and I linked the person next to me that I thought was my (laughs) partner and it turned out it wasn't my partner, it was actually somebody, I had no idea who it was and they looked at me rather strange, (laughs) but it was fine. (laughs) It's Disney, no one minds these things at Disney (laughs) I feel like going uh, to any Disney park with the family, it's a very emotional thing. Yes. And for you, and for you, you know, your children are growing up. But is there something about going over to Disneyland Paris and being there together, knowing that that is something that you share that is yours that makes it really special? Yeah, I, I, it's probably like all the parks. Really, you know, people say, "How can you keep going back to the same place for holiday time after time?" And I say, it's not a holiday. It's a, an experience. It's an emotion. You know, particularly with with my brother who is neurodivergent there's only a few places that he will go to and, and Disney is one of those. So, you know, we're guaranteed that everyone's going to enjoy it and it's like the minute you walk through the escape, you're in a bubble, aren't you? And yeah. everything just escapes. So it's it's not just a holiday, it's an experience. It's, you know, for us, it's a way of life, really. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, your annual pass holders, it's, it's literally, it is your <laughs> life. It's part of it. Do you hope then, as your children grow up, that it's something that they'll pass down to their children yeah I think they will they are also equally Disney obsessed they already talk about various things they're going to do with their children and you know I'm going to be called Granny Disney apparently so (laughs) I'll take that (laughs) I love it well thank you so very much no thank you for having me (laughs) now it's time to chat to two of my favourite people who I first met in Disneyland Paris. Uh, I love seeing their many, many adventures in Disney parks over the years. And now they are here. Hannah and Becky Cheetah. Oh, hello. <laughs> thanks Hi. for having us. Hi, G. Thanks so much for having us. I am so excited to be here. It's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> absolute pleasure. Uh, as I just said, we first actually met in the flesh in Disneyland Paris. Yep. <gasps> now, I knew it was going to be a magical trip because it was it was the 30th anniversary. And I walked in and you two were the first thing that I saw. I know. We were just like stood admiring the castle and I just felt this tap on the shoulder and we, were, we both was like, ah! <laughs> and it was the best trip. <laughs> it really, really was. Uh, so how many times have you been to Disneyland Paris? We have been to Disneyland Paris three times together and Disney World five times between us. Disneyland Paris was actually our first holiday together without the help of mum and dad. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we went, so when we started our list of dreams, yeah. on the top was to go on holiday together without mum and dad. We didn't need them anymore. Um, and we went to Disneyland Paris, didn't we? And yeah, that was the first trip we ever went to, just um, us two and our cousin, because we couldn't completely do it on our own. And then we've been twice since one with you. And yeah, one again. And we got to take our little cousin Bella for the last two, which is pretty cool. Um, What is the accessibility like at Disneyland Paris? Disney is my favourite place to go because it is just easy. Accessibility at Disneyland Paris at both the parks and hotels have been well thought through. They do an access card, which means it is easier to get on a ride, but still waiting the wait time. 
Stick with me, Giovanna. I'll get you to the front. <laughs> She's not joking. <laughs> she does a royal wave as she goes past everybody. <laughs> I think it is that you had Ruth on the podcast and she had it right when she said it's just easy. Yeah. You can go to any Disney park and you know you'll be all right. You know you'll have what you need. And you know that the staff are trained to be able to help in any certain situations, which is amazing. You've got the special like access areas, you know, to watch oh. the parade, mm -hmm. to watch the fireworks, mm. things like that. And it's, I can't explain it. Like it's, when you go on a holiday or you go somewhere with someone who's got needs such as Hannah, you have to think through everything. Yeah. Like you have to have thought about it. 10 times over and you just don't have to hmm. you know that there'll be an accessible toilet there'll be a changing places if you need it there'll be like a quiet area and you just fit in do you feel like there's a feeling of in terms of accessibility that I think so many places you can often feel like it's an afterthought they've created somewhere and yeah. oh god we've got to make it accessible do you feel like Disney is a place that is built with everyone in mind I'd like to think so for definitely for us obviously Every disability and condition yeah. is different, oh. but for a physical disability, 100%. Both parks also do an accessibility map, which shows you the specifics on each ride and lets me know which ones I can go on ahead of time to save the embarrassment of being turned away. So does that in itself you know, you can do your research before you go and it's so well thought through. And also it saves you getting excited about something yeah. that... Maybe you can't go on. Yeah. I mean, we've had it before with other parks, not Disney, where we've actually been on a ride, buckled in, and they've come up and said, you can't go on it because we've just seen you carry her on. They let you get to that point right. first where there's none of that in Disney. You know, they know what's what can go on. They know that it's all safe. It's ready to go. And you just have a great time. Yeah. It's got to be so upsetting. Yeah. You know, oh, like, yeah. Oh. It's embarrassing more than anything, oh, you know, yeah. to be told to get off while everyone's ready to go. It's just humiliating. And I think I always say to uh, like other theme parks, they could take a leaf out of Disney's book because it's just, you, you can't have a bad time at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> can't. And where do you find out all your info before going? Like before your first ever trip? The website, Disney website, has got everything you need. Everything has got a whole access bit and it's got um, everything about the um, hotels, the parks, how to get your um, access Ooh. pass. Everything you need access-wise is on there. Yeah. All the other little hidden gems, maybe social media floating around. If you're going with access needs, I would definitely check out the little privatised areas where you could see so get front row for the parade, front row for the fireworks, and, you know, you mm. get to see the characters when they walk past. So I definitely think that's a little hidden gem if you're going with additional needs. <laughs> we met Donald and Daisy Duck last year, and Daisy signed her name, and I love you, to me. It was so beautiful, as I felt seen and special. So that was another thing. That was crazy. That was like, I mean, Hannah does Makaton, don't you? So mm. little signs. And when Daisy started signing back, I was like, get the tissues. Get, get the tissues. <laughs> I am gone. And it was just a lovely little special moment that was, yeah. And it's those little things, isn't it? Yeah. Those little things that actually mean so much. Yeah. Mm. And I, you know, we're not expecting the world to change for us, but I think those little changes make the world for us. And it's not, big things they're not big things that we're asking for and Disney's just got it nailed I love that um, and what makes Disneyland Paris so special for you as sisters it is just something we both have an absolute love and excitement for when we go we can turn into our goofy selves and nobody cares we don't feel so different at Disney we are welcomed for being us and that is something we will always share yeah I think ever since we because it was our first holiday together mm. It was kind of like a wake-up call of we can do anything. Yeah. And it was the beginning of our adventures mm. together. And I think it will always mean that to us. Mm. And like Hannah said, we just don't feel different there. Yeah. You know, we just feel like we fit in. Like, it's a, a special mm. place where you just felt like you belong. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> Ladies, I have loved remembering things with you <laughs> and uh, talking about your Disneyland Paris uh, memories and hopefully at some point in the future we can rendezvous there mm. once please more. thank you so much for having us we love you also 
When are we going to Disney together again? <laughs> <laughs> we beat you to it. <laughs> so did. We, yes, it was. Um, I feel like we should. Well, let's go further afield. There we go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go to Disney World this next time. But yeah, and thank you for having us. It's, we love Disney and we love you. So perfect. Thank you so much. Love you. <laughs> now, before we chat to our fabulous Disney insiders, we have one more guest. Now, she's not just a Disney fan. No, no, no. She has been crowned the UK's biggest Disney fan. Now, I thought I was married to the person with that title. It turns out I'm not. Uh, to hear all about this amazing title, please welcome Catherine Chung. Hello. Hello. I mean, that's quite massive. The UK's biggest Disney fan. I know. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. It's just out of this world like well for anyone at home that doesn't know about what what led to this this title being bestowed upon you tell us more so disney parks uk had a competition mm -hmm. back in january february time to find the uk's biggest disney fan and to enter you had to submit a 30 to 60 second video on instagram or facebook okay telling them how much you love disney what disney meant to you and out of those entries, Disney Parks UK would pick 10 fans okay. to go on a holiday of a lifetime to Disneyland Paris, Walt Disney World, and on board the Disney Wish, which is the newest cruise line. Honestly, when I heard that that was what 10 people were going to be doing, I, I was like, where do I enter? I know, same. I mean, that's, that's what, literally what I did. I wasn't allowed to enter. Oh, no, sorry. But you're welcome. <laughs> oh, I wish you could have. <laughs> we would have been on such a nice trip. Yeah. So tell me, so what happened first? Where did you go first? Oh, well, so we started in Disneyland Paris. Okay. That was there. We were there for two nights or two days. Yeah. Um, and then we jumped on a plane, went to Florida, to Walt Disney World, stayed in Animal Kingdom Lodge. Amazing. Which was amazing within itself. Yeah. Um, did all four parks and then went to the Disney Cruise yeah. for three nights. And, and again, how just I can't believe how incredible that was. So while but you were on this trip, what were you doing to? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it wasn't just a holiday. We, the 10 fans had to compete in 10 challenges over the 10 days. Right. And with each challenge, you won points. Okay. So if you won, you got 10 points. If you came second, you got eight. If you came third, seven, and so yeah. on. And the winner of all across all 10 challenges, whoever got the most points would be officially crowned the UK's biggest Disney fan and win a stay in the Cinderella Castle Suite. I mean, as if those three destinations, those three things weren't enough, you then get to stay in the castle. I know, I know, once in a lifetime. Yes. Not only is it a once in a lifetime trip, but then that stay just unbelievable i mean i am very jealous right now i can't tell you how many hints i've dropped it's just not a thing that people can do i know you literally have to you know you yeah. have to really earn your place there i mean i didn't i didn't expect to, to win it either i mean i've i've dreamt about it like yeah like, you know you yourself like staying there but not any part of me thought i would actually get the chance to stay so what were those challenges like what did you have to do like we defended Avengers Campus by defeating spider bots. So like, that's a little <laughs> robot, like spider from like Spider-Man and they interact with each other so yeah. you can actually like battle each other. There was conquering the magical maze. So there was a 3D printed map of Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. and we had to answer riddles by guiding this ball to the correct like attraction or restaurant. Amazing, so fun. And then we had to like recreate postcards and do as much as we could on the cruise line or like on in Disneyland Paris. Yeah to matching film-inspired food on the cruise line mm -hmm. with the correct film and to their correct release date. <laughs> oh, wow. So it was a mixture of different things, but so, so fun. Like, honestly, none of us expected the challenges to be so fun. You're quite nervous, really. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're competing. But actually, we all got on so well. Um, and some of them were when the parks were closed as well. So it was, like, super exclusive and... You'd never be able to experience it. No. Like, ever. So, honestly, like, thank you to, to Disney <laughs> because the trip was once in a lifetime, mind blowing. Like, I can't even describe it. It was such an amazing, like, 10 days that's yeah. going to be with us forever. And, yeah. Well, I mean, tell me about the moment that you were crowned the UK's biggest <gasps> Disney fan because you have 
something very special with you right now as well. Yes. Yeah. Which I think we should probably mention. So we were given this glass slipper in the suite. It's one of Cinderella's glass slippers. <laughs> it's got Cinderella Castle suite engraved on the side and the date that we stayed on it on the I other side. It. So it's been such a lovely memento. And honestly, I have to look back at the glass slipper and the tiara as well to really make it a reality because honestly it just feels like a dream I don't believe it myself and I have to keep looking back at the slipper and the tiara to like remind myself that it actually did happen <laughs> because honestly it just feels like a dream it really does feel like a dream I can't believe it actually happened but I've got the proof, got the so, proof. <laughs> yeah so tell me what it was like to stay in Cinderella's castle suite because for people that don't know it's a room that is in the castle in Walt Disney World like this is major I know it's it was incredible I mean like I'm gonna have to try and try my best to sum it into words because I honestly don't think any way can really describe it but it was so magical it really is like a fairy tale that's yeah. been like lifted out of a fairy tale that you can experience yourself like you really are like Cinderella like you they tra- treat you like Cinderella in there really? like it's like you go in there you've got all the different emblems like you've got Cinderella and Prince Charming's emblem you've got the little mice dotted around <laughs> it's honestly so beautiful and all the detail in there is just there's so much to take in yeah I think one night's enough really <laughs> but you look out and you can see the guests walking around the castle and it really puts it in perspective that you're inside <laughs> inside Cinderella's castle and like the park is kind of still around you and yeah. the guests are still around you but it must be so surreal when everyone leaves oh yeah it's like so quiet yeah you have the crackling fire Oh, on the nice. fireplace, that's nice, that's nice. Um, but you still have 24-hour concierge, so you're never left alone. Yeah. But it does mean that you are treated completely like royalty because they are there to, like, what for whatever needs, like, that you yeah. want. They they even ask you, like, what food you want, and they, <laughs> they bring you... I didn't even know what to ask for. I was like, a Mickey pretzel and <laughs> Disney popcorn and cheeseburger spring rolls. And like they, they honestly, whatever you ask, like they brought it over. They have like little sweet treats in the room for you. So biscuits, chocolates. And in the evening when we like, we, you're allowed to ride any ride you want. They will guide you and lead you on to any ride you want. Wow. Yeah, talk about spoil. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't, oh. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine what I would do if I was in that situation. I think I would literally get into the room, put my pyjamas on yeah. and just, I don't know. Well, that's, that's similar to what we, we felt because we had 10 days of amazing holiday yeah. and challenges. When we were inside the room, it was like the first time we could sit down and go, oh, we're here. And I, kn- I, I know that I'm very lucky. Um, and... Yeah, it's just, it was pure magic, pure magic. Definitely something to remember for the rest of my life. Well, as the UK's biggest Disney fan, what does Disney mean to you? Well, for me, I think Disney is a feeling. It's that feeling of happiness, of hope, of wonder. It's a place where dreams and wishes can come true. And it's where my most happiest memories are. And I think... You know, with Disney, that's why we go back to the parks. That's why if we can't go to the parks, we welcome Disney in. Mm -hmm. Because that happy feeling, that hopeful, happy feeling is one that we don't want to lose. We want it to last forever. Um, I remember the last time I was there with my parents was during the Wishes Fireworks show. And I actually made a wish that I'd like to take my partner, Richard, now husband, (laughs) at the time. And then... 10 years or so later, I actually went with him and we got engaged there. So I'm so grateful that I have someone like Richard or my partner that I can share this with, which I'm sure you you feel the same as well. Absolutely. And it's that thing, isn't it? It's something that you loved with your family when you were younger and now looking ahead to the future, you know. I can't wait because I am, I'm I'm expecting a little one. I I did suspect. (laughs) I did suspect. (laughs) So yeah, I can't wait to take them um, back to the parks, experience it through their eyes and um, yeah. Well, and that's the thing, isn't it? How do you top staying in the castle? Well, actually from now on, you'll be going with your little one. So you're seeing it in a whole new way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I can't, like you say, for to this day, it's only been me and my friends or yeah. like me and my partner or family. But for the future, it's going to be 
us and our little one. Yeah. It's going to be seeing it through their eyes and, you know, hopefully hearing their excitement and enjoyment just as ours. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait. Well, the next time you go back, it's going to be so surreal looking at the castle going, I, I know. Once. Well, I got so, no one's going to believe you. No, I got so emotional during the actual, like, announcement of the winner because I realised, well, Mickey came out and I realised that Mickey has actually been there through all these key moments in my life, like through my first holiday, through my engagement, through my honeymoon and, mm -hmm. and like with baby bump and now in the future with baby. And it's just, I just couldn't believe it. And it's yeah. just, it, it means that like for me, Mickey, Cinderella's Castle, Magic Kingdom, it's always going to have that very special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, Catherine, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Th uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us and huge congratulations thank you. on becoming the UK's biggest Disney fan. <laughs> thank you. I, I am honoured to be talking to you. Thank I'm you. I'm honoured too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, one of my favourite parts of hosting Journey to the Magic has been learning about so many amazing facts, tips and offers from our Disney insiders. And I am one very lucky lady today because I get a double helping. Please welcome back to the pod, Elkie and Jamie. How are you both? I'm very well, thank you, G. And I'm the hair is spectacular oh, for anyone thank watching. Thank you, thanks, G. Well, I thought, you know, I've not been able to be around for this series, and I've been really sad about that, but I have been listening, and it sounds so, so great. So I thought I'd make, I'd make a point of coming and doing my hair for you today, Oh, thank G. you very much. How are you, Jamie? <laughs> I'm all right. I am fresh off uh, a Walt Disney World trip. So, really? Uh, Where have you been? Yeah. Uh, I stayed at Coronado Springs, so I did two weeks in Coronado Springs, it was lovely. Now, I always say I've got a million questions about your own personal Disney trips and experiences, and we're changing things up today, and I am going to ask you some of those. But first, important business. In the UK and Ireland, I know an exciting offer has just launched for Walt Disney World. Tell me more. Well, I can't wait for the stories later, so I'm excited about that. But <laughs> yeah, Jamie too. But I've said it before, but our guests are always wondering when the best time to book that Walt Disney World holiday is to lock in that great value. Mm -hmm. But that time is now, G, because we have just launched our early booking offer and this offer is perfect for us Brits. We love our holidays and we love to forward plan as much as possible. So if you've started dreaming about your 2024 holiday, then listen up. At the moment, we have an offer, which means families who book their on-site accommodation at one of our participating Walt Disney World Resort hotels and their Disney 14-day magic ticket together as a package before the 6th of July 2023 for select arrivals in 2024, they will receive special perks and benefits to make their holiday even more magical. So what they what will they receive? Wait for it, drum roll. Okay. Up to $2,100 of dining and merchandise credit per room on a two-week stay at select resorts from the 1st of August to the 30th of September 2024 or $1,200 credit on a two-week stay on select arrivals from January to December 2024. And I mean, $2,100 is an incredible value, right? So yeah. it's, it's a great time to book. And what's more is that our 14-day tickets are the same price as a seven-day ticket. So the Disney Magic tickets are exclusively for UK and Ireland guests on select arrival dates and as I say, they're only available pre-departure. So by buying those 2024 tickets, you're now going to double the Disney magic. Mm, I love that. People that haven't been before, yeah. buying a 14-day ticket might sound like a daunting thing. It's a, that's, that's a lot of days. But do you think people understand the scale of Walt Disney World? I mean, it's absolutely massive. Yeah, it can be quite a big commitment mm -hmm. to some. So the way I see it is that if you think about it more as a ticket that will give you entry to four theme parks plus a water park, which is valid for 14 days, then it just it makes things a lot easier to kind of understand. And as you say, Walt Disney World is not small. Mm -hmm. 25 acres in size, which is around 43 square miles. And just to put that into context, it's the same size as the entire city of San Francisco. Huge. Oh, my gosh. Um, 
And it's roughly the same size as Greater Manchester in the UK as well. So <laughs> again, you're going to need 14 days. I really love doing it. And actually as a family, I love I loved dipping in and out of the parks. It takes the pressure off of trying to cram it all in and like that two days or whatever it is yeah. that people go for. Actually being able to go, you know what, we're going to have a morning by the pool and then go in later and see the fireworks or whatever. Yeah. For me, that is the way that we Disney and we make it work and I absolutely love it. Uh, now this offer comes with such a great benefit of the dining and merchandise credit. Uh, you and Jamie have the best recommendations always. I'm intrigued to see what you will spend the credit on. Well, it's always dining for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Not wearing much. Disney snacks. <laughs> wearing my little Mickey pretzels. Uh, but yeah, for me it would definitely be dining. Some of my favourite restaurants are are in Walt Disney World. So some of my favourites at the moment, Space 220 and Epcot. So good. So as the name suggests, uh, you actually visit a space station 220 miles above Epcot. So you take a special elevator, which is a great experience. Um, and then while you were dining to some of the most amazing food including some really great plant-based options as well you have like this incredible panorama of like space and mm -hmm. you know there might, might, might be like an astronaut or like another spaceship coming past that is amazing um one of the newest additions which i got to try on my recent trip is roundup rodeo barbecue in disney's hollywood studio so it's like barbecue food amazing barbecue food um and so you're kind of in like andy's like play set with all of the characters like kind of around you um kind of like so you're sort of like playing with them mm -hmm. it's really fun really great food and great cocktails as well because i do quite like a disney <laughs> cocktail um but of course you know we can't forget character dining it's a great way to see a lot of characters so um a couple of my favorites i really like the crystal palace in magic kingdom park right. so you get to see winnie the pooh and all of his friends yeah. And the one I, I did it a couple of weeks ago um, is uh, Tusker House in Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. I've never done that one. Oh, it's really good food. So it's like African inspired food. Nice. So it's a little bit different. Um, and they have like Donald and Daisy and their really cute safari oh, outfits wow. and some other friends. Um, and then they do like this little kind of like jungle dance every 45 minutes or so. So it's like really lively. It's really fun. So I'd also recommend recommend that one. I love it. Alki, okay, what would you spend the money on? I'm hungry now. Thanks, Jamie. Um, yeah, I think dining for me would be a big part of this too. I always love trying the latest snacks. So mm -hmm. on Instagram and TikTok, you always see like the things to get, don't you? So I always make a point of trying to find those around the parks. But I think I do love me some table service dining. Um, so the couple that I'd like to mention, Tiffin's over in D Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. That's an incredible one to do. And then Disney Springs, and I know Jamie loves this one as well, is the boat house. So that's an incredible dining option there that I would definitely be spending my money on. Aside from dining, though, I do think that you can't go wrong with some Disney merchandise. And I, when I look around, we're all in the Disney spirit jerseys. <laughs> so I think They've we're all like fans. Almost like it's something that you start collecting, it I is. found. Every time I go, I'm like, oh, I'll so just get a little... club, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. most of my wardrobe. I think I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're all friends, Jamie. Um, so, yeah, I definitely would probably spend some of that money on the merchandise spirit jerseys. And also they're available for your dogs now. So my little dog has also a wardrobe of spirit jerseys. <laughs> but anyone that you know, loves to get their dogs out with the Disney merch, that's also Can you option. match, Elkie, with your dog? We definitely do match. Wow. Yes. Uh, my Instagram is full of me match. How have I not seen this? I know. Even the Disney Cruise Line ones, there's a really cute little Captain dog outfit that you can wow. get. So, so cute. Very, very cute. Um, and also I have to mention because I did see Jamie had one the same as I do the D100 merchandise that's out at the minute mm -hmm. is incredible so I definitely would maybe splurge on some of that there's always something really exciting about things that pop up like the D100 it's only time. now yes. yeah that you know Absolutely. so when you go and there's Christmas for that year all of a sudden <laughs> massive queues for that that year's Christmas stuff but the D100 that is literally now yeah absolutely yeah. it's it's funny because I think even as cast members don't we were all proudly sporting the D100 merch. Have you got yeah. the spirit jersey, Jamie? I don't actually have that spirit oh. jersey. It's the actual one of the few that I haven't got. Oh, recently. okay. Yeah. So we've all like walking around with our D100. <laughs> I'm literally shaking my head at you, Jamie. I know. I know. I've let myself down. You have. Let, let yourself down. You've let us down. <laughs> you know. 
Um, so yeah overall g yes dining 100 percent, but also the merchandise would be where i'd spend my money and we've got some uh, lovely merch around us look at these two 100s okay. mickey and minnie over here hi guys <laughs> they're still here um so what else is new at Walt disney world disneyland paris or on the disney cruise line well, we have covered quite a lot of our new news across mm-hmm. the podcast series, but hot off the press is that the Disney dining plans are back for Walt Disney World in 2024. Yes! Well done, guys. This is excellent <laughs> news. Tell us more. For those that don't know, tell us what that is. Okay. So for those that don't know and aren't familiar with those dining plans, they will allow you to pre-purchase your meals and snacks ahead of your holiday. So it's a really great way to budget for your trip because mm-hmm. you kind of know most of your meals or all of your meals are covered. Um, so there are two options. You can choose from the quick service dining plan or the Disney dining plan. Um Both plans provide everyone in the party, ages three and up, a specific number of meals and snacks based on the number of nights of your Disney Resort stay. Um, The Disney quick service dining plan includes two quick service meals and one snack. Mm -hmm. And then the Disney dining plan includes one table service meal, one quick service meal and one snack per day. So uh, there's also beverage options as well. So some include alcohol and some don't. So you can really tailor it to kind of your family's needs. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, you know, we've talked about quite a lot of our restaurants, but I actually, I don't think many people know how many restaurants there are across Walt Disney World. There's over 100 quick service locations and nearly 100 table service destinations as well. Um, And having recently traveled with someone who has, uh, who is a bit of a picky eater and also has some dietary kind of special requirements and the restaurants are fantastic at catering to those people as well. So it's really great for kind of like all of the family, really, you can find something for everyone. I've got to say, over the last sort of 19 years that I've been going, I've noticed a massive change in all of the restaurants as well. Every time I go back, there just seems to be more choice, you know, more understanding of dietary requirements and everything like that. It's incredible. And the dining plan, it sounds like a a great idea for families who just want to know ahead of time that they're going to budget accordingly and that they don't have to worry about that when they get there. And you can book them all from 60 days out. Incredible. So if I wanted to book the early booker offer and get a dining plan can I do that is that all right am I allowed you definitely can in fact they're quite complimentary Um, so you can purchase your dining plan and then you can use your early booking offer credits to buy some additional dining so you can treat yourself to some really lovely signature restaurants or some added character meals or if you're like me and you do like to have a nice cocktail in the (laughs) evening you can you can use them on specialty drinks and cocktails as well as merchandise as well so really complimentary Okay, I love it. Uh, Now, guys, I'm looking forward to my second Disney cruise on Disney Dream this summer. I'm taking the whole family. I cannot wait. Uh, Is there anything that I should be looking out for? Anything that I should especially be looking forward to? Well, this summer is Disney Cruise Line's 25th anniversary and the silver anniversary at sea. So there's going to be plenty of stuff on board for you to see. Okay. So I'm also sailing as well. So I've been doing some research and checking everything out. Yeah, maybe we will. <laughs> Apparently deck four, you can just run around it quite a few times. It's the loop. I've read it up. You can. There it's we like go. A little, we'll do a 5K. Like, it's a running deck or a yeah. promenade deck, they call go. it. But yeah, I mean, if you want to run on holiday, you can do that. <laughs> Jeremy's like, I'll be in the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> That's more me than you. <laughs> Oh, but um, so for the silver anniversary at sea, I did just want to kind of recap everything that is going to be happening on board. So we have new character outfits. Um, there's going to be a celebratory song. There's new entertainment, merchandise, food and beverage options. And there is a new castaway club tier called Pearl for our most frequent sailors. I know all about this, Jamie. How far off are you from getting the Pearl status? I have cruise 21 and 22. <gasps> wait, no, I have 22 and 23 books. Oh so I'm not... Gosh, come I'm, back next year and we'll be a pearl. <laughs> I know, maybe for season four, I'll be like, oh, I'm pearl. <laughs> I love that. Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, you know, there are so many amazing shimmering details across Disney Cruise Line this summer. I am really excited and I'm sure you are as well to give them I a try. wait. Cannot wait. Yes. But there's more. 
Oh, because we've got some news from Disneyland Paris as well. So I'm really excited to say that the evening show at Walt Disney Studios, Avengers Power the Night, will be making a return on the 1st of September and will be on show until the 5th of November. So you have another chance to watch it this summer. So for those of you that have been listening or haven't been listening, Avengers Power the Night is the drone show um, around the Tower of Terror and Disney, Walt Disney Studios Park. So I'm very excited to see that one. Um, and I'm also, I'm, I'm generally buzzing because I love this place. I'm so excited for the relaunch of the flagship Disneyland Hotel. I cannot wait. I can't believe how long it's been closed for. I know. I think it's going to be really, really something special. Yeah. Um, I think from it's going to have some really lovely royal storytelling and theming going oh. on. And unfortunately, that's about as much as I can really share. But please do check back over the next couple of months because we'll be having more details. To it's share. always been such a magical hotel, though, because I think when you go to any Disney park, I think there's that thing of that's the closest you're ever going to get to the magic. You are literally right there. So yeah. I can't wait for it to open again. And at the end of the day, you know, you don't have too <laughs> far, far to go. <laughs> I know, it's just there. <laughs> uh, thank you, as ever, for your expert knowledge. It's been amazing. Uh, but now I'm going to turn the tables and ask you both for some of your own Disney stories in a very special version of Lightning McQueen's Quick Fire Round. Are you ready? You both I'm looking scared. a little bit nervous. Yeah, me too. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> right. Now, just to remind everyone at home uh, of your Disney Insider credentials. Elke, how many times have you been to the parks or on a Disney cruise? 46, oh, I think is my number now. Yeah, okay. so a lot. And Jamie, lot, same lot. question to you? I think across all three locations, probably about 100. <gasps> Elke, you need to pull I your know. socks up. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we've got Jamie. One day, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Right. Blake, like, we're going to start off with you telling me your favourite memory or your funniest memory from a Disney trip. Go. Okay, so a funny moment that it still makes me laugh now. Back in 2018, it was. When we launched Pandora, the world of Avatar, so off of Animal Kingdom, um, I was actually out in resort with 15 travel agents and I was taking them around Pandora and I was explaining how beautiful and how, you know, the storytelling came to be. And we was just about to board the Navi River journey. So I don't know if you've done this attraction, G. So I was setting up in the fact that, you know, it's a very tranquil, you board a riverboat and it's just absolutely immerses you into the world of Pandora. And I ended by saying to everyone, now make sure when you go on this attraction, you look out for the best in class animatronic Disney has ever, ever done before. Today, it was the best thing we'd ever had in a park. Uh, I even went as far to say that for cast previews that, you know, you cast thought this was a real person. So then my group decided to go on this attraction and think that every single cast member was an animatronic. (laughs) I kid you not, right? So even even the gentleman boarding us, holding our hand into the riverboat, everyone is like that's really real and I was just giggling because I thought I mean we're good at Disney right we're it is advanced but and it wasn't until we got to the end of that attraction and they see the shaman of songs (laughs) singing and they're like oh Um, so still to this day whenever I walk past that attraction I just think gosh yeah we're great at Disney with our animatronics but it is the shaman of songs it isn't the cast members helping you board the riverboat well, that's going to change my view of it, though, next time I go. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie? Uh, uh, my favourite and probably funniest memory is also at Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. Yeah. And uh, it's actually the proposal that my brother-in-law did to my sister. Oh. So um, we were on holiday. The plan was he was going to propose. We so Some of us knew, not everyone did. Obviously, my sister didn't. And uh, he woke up the following day, the first day that we'd got there. And he was like, I, I can't wait until day four. I, I have to do it now. This ring is burning a hole in my pocket. Please help me. So we went to Animal Kingdom. We found some cast members. We were like, look, we, we're looking for a location to like do this proposal. And the cast members were amazing. They were like, come with us. We can set us up. We can pretend that like you know, I'm a cast member, my husband's cast member, we can pretend that we know you and you've got like <laughs> done us a little special. So we went in and we saw Mickey and Minnie and we had like this lovely family photo and then everyone left except my brother-in-law and sister. And uh, he got down on one knee and she just wasn't expecting it. And she just 
cried and cried. <laughs> and my overarching memory of this is just like her sobbing and Minnie just like rubbing away the tears <laughs> trying to stop it while Joanne was going, look at the ring. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. That also leads us nicely onto this next one. Honeymoon at a Disney park or a Disney fairy tale wedding. Which one would you go for? So um, I had a Disney fairy tale wedding on Disney Cruise Line on the Disney Magic, my favourite ship. Uh, so I would go for a for a Disney fairy tale wedding. And also we talked about this a couple of episodes ago. I officiated my best friend's wedding at Disney's Animal Kingdom. A lot of stuff is happening at Disney oh, Animal yeah. Kingdom, isn't it? Nice. Uh, but yeah, so... Wedding's all the way for me. Okay, Alki. That, that, I feel like we, we tagged him very well because I was going to say honeymoon. I honeymooned there. Yeah, so, well, for me, I got married in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So my honeymoon was spent at Alani Resort and Spa, which was incredible. And everyone always say, would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, I think just because it had the quintessential, like, Disney storytelling with the Hawaiian culture, mm. it just, like, made for the most wonderful, wonderful honeymoon. So, yeah, I'd go honeymoon. Well done, guys. Mm. I like that. Disney's Polynesian Resort or Disney's Beach Club? For me, Polynesian, as I say, it just takes me back to the Hawaiian vibes of Alani. And also they have my favourite breakfast, Tonga Toast, at Kona Cafe. Mm. Um, so... Like I say, I'm a foodie, so that would definitely sway me. Okay. And yeah, I'm actually, I love the beach club. I think the beach club has an amazing smell and it's perfectly situated for a nice walk along the boardwalk. And you can also walk to Epcot and Hollywood Studios as well. So if you've had a couple of cocktails, you know, you don't have to go too far. <laughs> it's also nice knowing that you can walk to two, I think. Yeah, definitely. But you've sold it. I just want to go there and sniff it now. <laughs> uh, okay, next one. I already know what one of your answers to this is going to be. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge or Marvel's Avengers Campus? I like Marvel's Avengers Campus. I just think the web slinging thing where mm -hmm. you're Spider-Man is just so much fun. I love it. Don't even need to ask, Elke. No. Come on. I'm wearing a Captain Marvel shirt under here, so I feel like I'm going against... But G knows me. <laughs> Star Wars Galaxy's Edge yeah. all day long. Big Star Wars fan. Okay, next up we have Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. I know what you want. Okay, <laughs> really, I'll give you the look like I, I know this one, Jamie. Let me pick, let me go first. Um, Mickey's Not So Scary. The fact that I get to dress up, I get to go trick or treating, I get to see an incredible Hocus Pocus show, incredible parades, yeah, for me. And also the time of year it is as well is one of my favourite times. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. What would yours be, actually? I really love the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. The last time I did it, we were watching the parade. And in the parade, Cinderella is in her kind of pumpkin, glass pumpkin coach. And it is so beautiful. And um, the group of people that I was with, we were watching it. And there's this little girl. She was kind of on her, like, dad's shoulders. And she was really quietly going, Cinderella. Oh. Cinderella and we were like oh we all need to help her so like my whole group were like shouting for Cinderella so that she would look this way and wave oh, at this I little see. girl and we just made the moment and I just love it for that also amazing fireworks I love that Great. and cookies <laughs> I forgot about the cookies De yeah definitely yeah. a Christmas person okay um okay favorite park or favorite cruise ship well, I've already answered this because I told you earlier mine is the Disney magic mm -hmm. it's it, yeah I just I adore it I change every hour, every day. In this moment, yeah, we'll take Magic it. Kingdom okay. in Walt Disney World. Quintessentially Disney. You know you've arrived. The magic's there. Okay, best thing you've ever done as a cast member? There have got to be some perks, guys. So many. Other than this podcast? Well, I mean, that is the <laughs> ultimate perk. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, there's been tons, and this is why I feel, like, super grateful that me and Jamie are sat here, like, there are so many. Um... We went and we helped host a Star Wars dedicated trip um, just as Star Wars Galaxy's Edge launched. And we had so many incredible Star Wars moments that happened for the fans that we also got to be a part of. But there was one evening where we had the whole land privatised and I was walking around and there were stormtroopers. <laughs> and it was just one of those pinch me moments that I think, yeah, 10 year old Elkie would be like, Oh my gosh, you've made it. I love that. Jamie? Yeah, that was amazing, that one. I remember <laughs> that. Um, I think mine was probably, would probably be uh, 
with Saturday Night Takeaway back in, I think it was 2017, when it was uh, the the final episode of the season was was in Magic Kingdom Park, mm-hmm. which was just like an amazing first. It's like 90, 90 minutes of like during the day, there was the park wow. was just full of people who were just like vying to see and yeah. on stage. Um, but yeah, I looked after all of the prize winners so kind of my job was just making sure that everyone who won a place on the plane got to kind of had that most amazing time so it was like really simple questions or giving them tips on where to go what to do where to eat I yeah I just I kind of think that I had like a helping hand in people make incredible memories so that's that's why that one's my favorite I've got to say as cast members who have been working with like for Disney for a long time it's lovely to see that you both still really enjoy the magic I love that. Um, it says a lot about everyone and everything. Uh, Mickey Mouse or Chewy, guys? And remember who your boss is. That's yeah. what I'm going to well, say. I was going to say, I think Chewy for hugs. And I know Davina yes. in an earlier episode Ugh. said how good the Chewy hugs are. But I think as cast members, there's something special about Mickey. I guess it's because without him, we wouldn't be here, right? So it's that kind of yeah. lovely moment. So I'd say Mickey. It did all start with a mouse. It did all start mm-hmm. with a mouse. Yeah. Uh, Favourite time to go on a Disney holiday? September and October time, I think, is really fun um, in Walt Disney World because you have Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party mm-hmm. going on as well. So you can get tickets to that and have a really great night. But there's also the International Food and Wine Festival. And I love food. I also really love wine as well. <laughs> so it's just really, it's really great to like try so many different kind of little plates of food and, and see just Epcot just decked out. It looks so beautiful and everyone's just having a really great time. So that's my I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say ditto because it's the perfect crossover for me. Halloween, spooky season and food and wine. So I agree. I'd say time it just right. So you get a little bit of Halloween and then, oh, it's Christmas. Exactly. You're That's, a genius. Mm-hmm. Uh, your ultimate top tip for those at home. Oh, it sounds a really obvious one for me, but I think it's enjoy the planning stage and it's never too early to plan like we know UK guests love to plan as we said earlier but I think for me there's so much fun to be had in Disney planning whether it's podcasts whether it's fan groups whether Mm -hmm. like there's so much out there that it's fun to kind of learn and even watching on social like where the latest snacks are available so for me I think my biggest top tip would be enjoy the planning stage there's so many ways that you can digest Disney information like a wedding it's just like enjoy the lead up enjoy the build up (laughs) definitely Uh, my tip would be to not think that you have to do a whole day in a park now don't get me wrong doing the rope drop at park open and staying till fireworks is a really great experience but by the end of the day your feet are going to be quite tired Mm -hmm. and you know kids might fall asleep so my tip is to break the days up so maybe start in the morning and do the parks in the morning before it gets really really hot have a nice lunch maybe like have a really great character meal maybe watch the parade in magic kingdom and then go home have a few hours around the pool Mm -hmm. kind of enjoying the last few hours of the sun and then go back in the evening and watch the fireworks or like go and have a really nice meal in disney springs kind of breaking it up so that you're not doing one park for the entire day because yeah. you'll you know it's it's really tiring if you do that and you enjoy it so much more if you go back and do one park over two or three or even four days like just like you know kind of cherry picking your favorites or be like oh i really like this i'm gonna yeah. go back and do it again and finally to celebrate 100 years at disney tell me your favorite Walt disney quote and why it resonates with you as mine is it, it i mean we just i kind of joked earlier but it, it all it all started with a mouse because it kind of I mean it did we wouldn't be here if if Walt didn't create Mickey Mouse and Mickey just resonates with so many people and I think he's like the perfect example of how something so small can become so great and huge and amazing so yeah that's I that's why I really love that quote I think the one that resonates with me is uh, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them and I just think everything about that It's how I live my life. Like genuinely, I've always been taught that, you know, follow your dreams. You've got to go after them. And it served me well. Like I'm here living my best Disney life as a cast member after eight plus years. So I think that's probably the one that I think will stand the test of time for me. And yeah, it just resonates. Guys, thank you so very much. What a pleasure. Thanks, Jean. Thank you. (laughs) Well, what an episode. I've loved chatting to so many passionate Disney fans today and I feel like I've picked up more tips 
than ever. Thank you so much to all of my guests, Jamie, Elke and everyone listening for celebrating 100 years of Disney with me on this very special episode. I think it's fair to say the magic is as strong as ever. To play us out, here are a selection of some of our wonderful listeners' magical memories, tips and shout outs. Here's to the next 100 years. Bye! I'm Holly from Plymouth and I've been to Walt Disney World seven times and Disneyland Paris many more since I was three. My most recent trip to Disneyland Paris was in January for my 28th birthday where I got to experience all the magic with my two best friends. It was one of the best trips I've ever been on and we even got to experience the first showing of Avengers Power of the Night. Happy 100th anniversary, Disney. And I can't wait to come home and be with the magic again soon. It was amazing seeing our son's make-a-wish dream come true. My favourite Disney memory was when I went to Disneyland Paris with Make-A-Wish. I got to see the parade and I met Woody and he gave me a special nod and I got to dance along with the music. It was so exciting. It was my dream come true. My favourite thing was the Caribbean and it was scary. And my favourite part of my son's wish was seeing all the incredible shows. And standing in front of the fireworks displays in the evenings made the wish even more magical. I'm Sue from Hartlepool in the North East. I've had around 30 Disney holidays since 1994 and stayed in 10 resorts in Orlando, Paris and been on a couple of Disney cruises, some with family but mostly with my husband. They've all been really different but I've loved them all. For those of you planning a first trip to a Disney park, I'd say enjoy the headliners, we all do, but take time to appreciate the small things like the windows on Main Street details in the theming, hidden mickeys, and find your own place where there's no greater pleasure than sharing a Disney treat while watching the world go by. Just enjoy yourselves, and remember, you're never too old for Disney. We're hoping to celebrate our 70th birthdays there. My name is Helen from Milton Keynes and we've been going to Disney as a family since 2012. We went on our first Disney cruise in 2016 and have now gone on eight cruises, making us Gold Castaway Club members. We've sailed on the Dream, the Fantasy, the Magic and the New Wish. There's nothing like driving up to the port and seeing the Mickey ears on the red funnels. Well, actually, walking into the atrium and hearing the cast members say, the Disney magic welcomes aboard the Maltby family, is possibly better. My advice is definitely try and do the parks and cruise in one trip, but always do the parks first. And don't forget your pirate gear for pirate nights. Hi, I'm Katie from Chichester in West Sussex. My top tip, if you're travelling with anyone older, uh, a bit like my mum, who's 74, is to stay at an amazing hotel like the Beach Club Resort. She loves it there. Um, she can chill out around the quiet port while myself and my children are off doing some wilder rides. My top tip for the Beach Club Resort would be to ask for a room near the quiet port. There's a pathway that runs down the side of the resort. Uh, and in the evenings, uh, if you're coming back from Epcot and the fireworks are going off, all you need to do is nip down the side of this pathway and into your room you can literally be back into air conditioned lobby within less than five minutes it's also really close to the boardwalk where you can go and get yummy ice creams in the evening i'm benedict from brighton and i've sailed with disney cruise line six times so far i've always been a fan of disney and cruising so combining the two is literally my ideal type of holiday where else can you visit a number of destinations aboard beautiful ships in the company of Disney characters and enjoy endless amounts of Mickey waffles and Mickey ice cream bars? One of my favourite memories is when I got to visit the bridge of the Disney magic and press the red button to sound the ship's iconic horn, which plays When You Wish Upon a Star. That was truly a magical moment for me, which I'll never forget. Hi, I'm Kirsty from Southampton. One of my most memorable moments was back in 2019 at Disneyland Paris. We met Tick and Tack, more commonly known as Chip and Dale. The cast member used my phone to take pictures. On trying to give the phone back, Dale stole the phone, put it in video mode and proceeded to avoid the cast member and myself taking video of himself and Chip being naughty and playing around. I did eventually get the phone back and it's now one of my most favourite videos. 
Hi, I'm Krishna from Rugby. We celebrated our Disney boom back in 2019 in Walt Disney World. We were so lucky to be immersed in the magic as soon as we checked into the Grand Floridian, which is where we spent most of our trip. We were welcomed in at the check-in desk and as soon as we walked in, the cast member turned around and said, welcome home. Um, This made me so emotional. The magic didn't stop there as we spent the best part of nearly three weeks experienced the magic while celebrating love in the most magical place on earth it was the best trip happy 100th anniversary disney see you real soon hey i'm lucy i love visiting the disney parks and often go on my own i travel two times a year to disney parks as a party of one and i've just sailed on my first solo disney cruise i'm proud to say that i've visited all the disney parks around the world some multiple times I'm currently on a mission to stay on each of the Disney cruise ships. So far, I've sailed on the Disney Dream and Disney Wonder. I'm always planning my next trip to the magic. Happy 100 years, Disney. Hi, everyone. I'm Cliff, and we are from Bristol. We've been going every other year to Disney since 1999, and we've been hooked ever since. I'd just like to share with you our proposal from back in 2011. I planned on proposing to my now wife at Magic Kingdom at the end of Wishes. As the finale of Wishes came, I delivered my speech not quite on one knee, as it was so packed. But I then produced a ring, and through the tears, she said yes, and made me the happiest man alive. Well, I hadn't quite thought it through, as the ring was two sizes too small. But she had somehow managed to still squeeze it on her finger nevertheless. And I just want to thank Diddy for making our proposal so special and magical. Happy 100th birthday, Diddy, and we shall see you next year. Hi, I'm Alison from Wantage in Oxfordshire. I've been to Disney now I think 13 times and we often get asked why we keep going back. And it's because of the Disney magic and the special memories that we've made there. It's become a really sentimental place for us, full of memories of family that sadly are no longer with us. So increasingly special. I remember back in 2017, it was my husband and I's first trip since my granddad had sadly passed away. Uh, And we went to watch the Enchanted Tiki Room show, which is a firm favourite, of course. Um, And I found myself in floods of tears as the music started. It had triggered a memory of my granddad singing that song to me as a child as he recounted his first trip to Disney. And, you know, it's such a special, special place full of so much magic and memories. And that's what brings us back year after year. Hi, I'm Kate Garraway. Frankie Bridge here. I'm Carrie Hope Fletcher. It's me, Romish Rang, an Ethan comedian, author, quickly approaching National Treasure. Disney team, a massive thank you for everything you do. Bringing magic to families everywhere. A hundred years is a massive milestone, so congratulations. A hundred years of joy just wonderful congratulations thank you